Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back. Um, this video, what I'm going to be doing today, is talking about another type of plant, tropical plant that I grow in my grow space, which I'm sure a lot of you know. I dabble a little bit in the carnivorous plants. Number one, they're fun. Number two, they do provide a little bit of a service for you and then reward you with certain things, um, especially these two. Uh, these guys here, let me move the little air plant out of the way. Well, it's actually a rather big air plant. Um, this is a Drosera capensis, or a Cape Sundew. I got it because they were, I was told they're easy to grow, and they are. As a matter of fact, this started out as one plant in a pot, and somebody who watches and who follows me on Facebook, uh, I think it's uh, Brenda, Brenda Worcester Paleo, I think I'm hoping to pronounce your name right, um, she bought one under my recommendations because they are very easy to grow. I mean, this thing is a huge clump now, and it does a number on the fungus gnats in this room. And I know fungus gnats can be a big issue, but in here, it seems they're really under control. They are attracted to the carnivorous plants for the offering of nectar, and then they are just devoured. And then it produces, which I didn't know that sundews did this. I knew they had flowers. I didn't know they were this pretty. They're little, like almost like little pink flowers. And then from there, they should produce um, seed pods, which will be great, because I'll just start growing them from seed. Then we have this guy here who looks like a violet or a viola, and this is a butterwort. I bought this one. This is actually the last surviving of the butterworts. It's the hardiest butterwort. It's a Pinguicula mornensis. It's a little one. Um, it's a very mini uh, Pinguicula mornensis, but they grow in clumps like the hen and chicks, the succulent hen and chicks. They look similar to hen and chicks, but they're sticky, like fly tape. And if you look on the leaves, if I can get a good shot, come on, zoom zoom. There we go, a little bit of zoom. You can see all the little fungus gnats that are growing and stuck, well not growing, but stuck to the leaves. What's growing is there's a little flower bud here, and then we have the two flower buds here. And this is what their flowers look like. They can all come in different shades of pink and purple, and some are white. But they're beautiful, and it's like a reward. They take care of your fungus gnats, and they give you this. And they're very easy to grow. The medium that they're potted in is like sand, perlite, and peat moss. The only trick with the carnivorous plants is I notice they need to be warm. Um, the butterworts are the only ones that I have that kind of go through a semi-dormancy period. But butterworts are also very easy to propagate, which I've done uh, with some advice from uh, Bill from Plants and Things page. You wait till they go dormant, and you pull off leaf pullings, and you stick them in another pot, and they grow kind of like African violets. They'll grow from the leaf pullings, or like a succulent. Um, here is the babies that grew from leaf pullings from that plant. All I did was, under his recommendation, I put them in a pot with some peat moss and some sand, and I put it in a, a Ziploc bag, and just kept an eye on it, making sure that they stayed warm. I used a heat mat to make sure the heat stayed, and then they stayed humid. And they just grew. It wasn't really that hard. In a couple weeks, I had brand new butterworts, and I think they're starting to catch fungus gnats. But they are worth it if you are really wanting to have some fun in growing them and a little bit of control on your pest problem in your grow space. Now moving on, I got little baby, these are called nepenthes. These are pitcher plants and if you notice, they these little ones have lots of little pitchers on them because they are doing another number on the fungus gnats in here too. If I looked inside, which it's hard to get a camera angle, the water that's inside their pitchers is loaded with little fungus gnats. Then I have this guy here and this is another one. This is a um, Nepenthes. I think the tags are mixed up. This says Ventrata and Alata, but I think that's this one. I think somehow during watering, I somehow switched the tags. I think the one that's got the orange looking uh, pictures is actually a Sanguiana. I think it is because it says orange on this tag. <laughs> so what happens when you have a lot of plants and you're in the middle of watering, you just kind of like they fall out and you're like, oh, I'll just put them back and try to get to the other plants before uh, the night really closes in. Um, over here, I have more, these are, these started out the same size, like this guy here was, you know, you can see the size of it compared to my hand, he was about that big until they just kept growing and eating. This is a Nepenthes, I want to say, let me see, pull the tag out, wow, my finger's in the way, Spatulata and Ventricosa. Now, if you, if you guys are interested in getting a Nepenthes and you guys are first-time carnivorous growers and you guys are just trying to break into it, 
anything that has the Ventricosa or a Ventricosa, Nepenthes, I'm sorry, Nepenthes Ventricosa, or has that in the hybrid, is a very hardy species to grow. This is what the pitchers on a lot of them look like. They're kind of your typical pitcher, where they have that little bulbous pitcher. They have a red lip, which is called a peristome. Um, and some of them have really intricate colors. Now, as they get older, they probably will darken a little bit before falling off. Like, this one's a little more red. I'm trying to get a better angle on the light here, because it is kind of like the light somehow is saturating it out. I don't know why. But they're speckled. They're beautiful. They produce a lot of pitchers. They just require humidity. They're usually planted in sphagnum, just pure sphagnum. I often repot them into... Um, uh, a little bit of sphagnum, a little bit of perlite, and some bark chips. Not much. Just more sphagnum than the other two mixes, um, just to keep the humidity around them. Um, you hang them, they just their pitchers hang down, they catch bugs, you put them outside, as you probably would see on uh, Brad's channel from Brad's Greenhouse. He puts his outside and they eat a lot of yellow jacket bees. But I'm sure they eat everything else too, mosquitoes, flies, whatever just crawls and falls into their pitchers. But they're beautiful, and this is what you're really, like, you're growing the form. This is like another form of a flower, in a way, even though it's not. It's just an extension of the leaf. But, you know, we grow them because the different colors and different sizes and shapes, just like we grow flowers. Moving on, this is a little bit more, this is actually an easy one to grow if you have the space and you have the humidity. It is a Nepenthes Miranda. It's a species, not a hybrid. Um, it gets really big. Like this one, if you could see it compared to my hand, here's the leaf compared to my hand. This is still a baby, and this still has not stopped growing. This is a big Nepenthes, and it will vine like crazy. If you give it the proper humidity, it will give you these beautiful pictures. I'm trying to get the color. They're almost like, like the red just bleeds into the green. And they're, if you look at my hand, they're pretty substantial, and they'll just get bigger over time. They're different than these. Like those are more roundish at the belly. And these are just long. They have beautiful red peristomes. And they just, like this one here is an older one. And this is the new one, I think, the new one that came out. And that's just huge compared to what my hand is. And they just get bigger and bigger and bigger. If you can give this one the proper humidity that it likes, it will grow and grow and grow and without, without any problems. Um, I try to keep them in here because the humidity in here, it's hard right now because of the cold snap to keep humidity high in here, um, but uh, if I keep the humidity decent, like I have this little guy here, this little Bell & Howell personal humidifier going off, it blows the humidity around the carnivorous plants and some of the plants that are around here gives them the proper humidity that they require. Um, this one loves it, but as you can see, if it does like it, it grows the pitchers. These guys don't need as much humidity, uh, these Nepenthes ventricosa hybrids or the ventricosa species. I find them to be really easy to grow. I would just mist them every once in a while if you have them in the house and hang in a nice sunny window. Just don't let them, I guess, I'm not quite sure if they can tolerate full sun. I haven't tried it, and I'm, I'm still new with this. So I would just give them orchid light where I'd have a dappled, um, a clear sh uh, drape in front of them so they just get bright light. But I'm sure they can tolerate full sun. And if you notice, the leaf coming out looks peach, and then it fades into this dark green. So they're pretty neat. And, and actually, to have them in your collection, if you want to try them, they're interesting and, and fun to grow. Uh, I, I didn't realize I'd have so much fun growing them. I really love the pitcher plants. Um, they're just really fun, and I didn't, I, at first I was really, like everybody else probably is, they're like really standoffish about it, and you're kind of nervous, like, oh, I'm going to kill it, I'm going to kill it. They're really not that hardy, or not that, oh my god, they're not that difficult. They are just, they have their specific requirements, kind of like any other plant does, like a succulent versus an African violet. So as long as you can meet those requirements, you can grow these guys without abandon. So, I mean, I recommend if you guys want to start out, get a Drosera capensis, and you guys will be really happy. This is a good windowsill plant. What I do with this guy is he's, whatever he's planted in, I make sure I leave water sitting in his tray just so he can absorb it up. If I notice that the tray is dry and I just take a look at the medium, I just put a little more water in. The only other thing you guys have to watch is like your tap water. If you have a high mineral content in your tap water, carnivorous plants do not like high mineral content. You have to use a water that is low mineral, distilled, rain, um, zero water actually would probably work. It takes a lot out of the water. Um, it even comes with its own uh, TDS or a total parts per million meter. Um, other than that, if you can provide distilled water for these guys, 
or you have a low mineral content in your tap water, go right ahead and grow them. They're fun, easy, and some of them do a service for you, as these two guys do. All right, guys, I hope you have a great day, and I will talk to you later.